This is just a signal to let us know that potentially the people who, I don't know where they are, who make the decisions on kit and equipment, have we finally caught up to, to what we need. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have a bit of a look at the day sack and a couple of other day sacks that I have and sort of compare the, the difference between them. Non-issued and issued. Let's get amongst it. Right, so the caveat at the start of this video, I am not 1 million percent a kit pest, okay? I have obviously spent a lot of money and had loads of different bits of kit and equipment, but there's people there who know exactly all the best aftermarket um, kit and equipment companies to use. Uh, the best ones that I've sort of used personally is Lumina. Um, hopefully I've pronounced that right. My pronunciation of words aren't the greatest at times. And CTR Fast. There's loads out there. So if you are a kit pest and you know all different bits of kit and equipment, yeah, Roger, get amongst it, you do you. However, there are two ones that I have used personally with um, non-issued stuff and I will continue to use. I can't do it so much at the minute because I'm in a training establishment and we gotta use complete issue kit uh, to give the cadet, in my case, or certainly other training establishments, the people coming through the confidence that issue kit and equipment does the job. And it does, it's not a lie, you can do the job with the issue kit and equipment. And that's the point I'm gonna raise when I bring up this day sack, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. Um, but definitely, it's like everything, that issue piece of kit and equipment can do the job, but the, mod the sort of stuff out there in the private sector, can it, it does the job a little bit better. And quite clearly, it all comes down to budget and all the rest of it in the army clearly is uh, getting people kit and equipment on the masses, or if you are sort of going out to do your own kit and equipment, that you individually doing it, so then you can buy that little bit better for equipment. And the, the little analogy I use is definitely when I, uh, the very little experience I had in the train sec trade sector when I was like 15, uh, was like, you had all your issued paint brushes and all the rest of it, but the painter and decorator I work with took me to the, the their shop where they get all their sort of kit and equipment and then upgraded the brushes. So it happens in every sector where you've got that basic piece of equipment that can get the job done. However, there's always that little bit better. Right, anyway, so first non-issue piece of equipment here is this. And this is a Warrior Assault Systems. Please don't ask me the actual name of it. It's quite old now. You can see I've still got all my markings for the Royal Irish and stuff or DZ and everything on it. I've had this for absolute donkeys. Um, I genuinely can't remember when I actually had this. Now, it's, it's an okay day sack. You can get quite a lot into it. I don't mind wearing it on sort of stuff where I'm not wearing body armor and all the rest of it. Uh, you know, if you're moving, if you're just doing like nav X's and all the rest of it, so navigation exercises or PT, that, that kind of style of stuff. I do find when you wear this with the body armor, specifically our Virtus body armor, which is good, far better than the Osprey and what we used to have. Um, is, is the straps don't fit properly and it kind of it kind of like sits right out from your back um, and that can be quite annoying if you're going through buildings and all the rest of it but it's a decent day sack it's done me well um, I've had it for a quite long time um, this is an on a non issue this is an issue day sack so there we go this is the one where I genuinely believe whoever like makes kit and equipment um, has modeled this off uh, a Munro. I'll try and get a picture of it up there now as I'm speaking because I don't personally have one, but a Munro day sack. And then uh, JJ's and Brecken do really great jobs of modifying Burgoons and day sacks and all the rest of it. And they've been doing it for years and years and years. They are the sort of goats when it comes to that kind of stuff. And I do believe whoever designs issued kit and equipment, I've clearly seen all the sort of dudes running around with uh, Munro day sacks with this, the, the jungle. This, you would you mostly get this done for the jungle because... Um, you can slide calm stuff or just stuff easy to get on the side. And this is what they've modeled it off. And genuinely, it's it's actually quite good. Now, it is issued. As soon as you start feeling it and touching it, compared to stuff like this here, you can definitely feel that the material's a little different. It's mass produced, and that, that's just the, the way of it. And the thing about being mass produced is, if you go into any kind of operation, which I've been talking about in like previous videos, where there's lots of us, um, you know, the supply chains are quite sort of far and far between. If this starts getting broken and wrecked, it can get punched out to you. Where if you're just clabbered in you know, thousands of pounds worth of your own stuff, if any of that becomes non-operational, you break it or you wreck it or you're involved, which it will do whenever you're constantly living in and living in it um, daily, it's gonna be harder to get that resupplied. Now, no one's ever gonna leave you without kit and equipment. You'll just probably just throw you some issued stuff. But the fact is, I think, if you can get used to using this kind of stuff, it's gonna do you better. That's not me throwing you off getting away because it is nice to have some comfortable um, non-issued stuff. But as you can see here now, it looks quite professional. And the reason why I've brought it is because 
I've been cutting around here in Sandhurst now. I was out in the field on the, a couple of weeks ago and there's a few people who were kind of like looking at me and then they came up and approached me and said, oh, have you tailored that? And I was like, no, 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 this is completely straight from the QEM, it's fresh, I have not touched it. Um, and they're like quite surprised themselves. But this is this is in my unit. So I believe if you're in the field armour, you've probably already seen these. And I obviously went for this one, which is like the, the Monroe style one, I think anyway, it looks like. There is another one, uh, similar size, and I think they've modelled it off a Camelback one, where you, you've got your uh, pouch inside to sort of slide your radio, and you've got the sort of antenna sort of ports and all the rest of it. This does, does it, or am I speaking? No, it does. There's an antenna port straight down the middle, but I like it. If I was to have a radio, I like the antenna coming off left and right, but I suppose you could sort of bend that round um, or put the radios in the left and right. Right, top zip then. You've got a zip in there for your top stuff. I have got a, just a jungle hat in there in a minute, but it's quite spacious enough there. Like You don't want to put too much because then it starts to be a... The good thing about them not making pouches massive, a bigger a pouch is, the more clobber you're going to put in there. It's just, it doesn't matter who you are, you're just going to be more enticed to put more crap in there and then you're either going to carry more weight for the sake of it or it starts sticking things out and looks hideous. Um, straps wise, now that's, that's the thing that's really got me off. Uh, it annoys me a little bit. Virtus equipment, there seems to be straps for straps for straps. Now I'm not getting my uh, Virtus Bergen out. It's in there somewhere deep in my flipping cupboard. I have to use it because I'm here, but it will go back deep into my cupboard when I lose he uh, leave here. But there's just straps everywhere, and even I know they do provide little bits of Velcro here uh, to tidy up the straps. It's okay for this day sack. Thankfully, it's just these two, and then you've got two along here. I haven't cut them off because when you go back to unit, so when I'm doing field exercises, that's when you're going to have to st you're strapping shovels to yourself, and it always is nice to have extra. Um, you know, straps to attach things on here because you've, we've all been there and I'm going to speak specifically in infantry and it will be for everyone at some stages where you're on that big mad exercise and just this crap gets, gets thrown at you and you have to carry it and if you've got no way and, and then everyone's kit just looks hideous no matter who you are um, but it's maybe just for that specific op and if, you, if you've got no means to like uh, top flap so set something underneath it and flap over it's good to have these extra straps to just strap as much crap to you as possible but for this day sack, this is actually quite good. You can tidy up the straps because it's hideous walking around and you look like an octopus. There's just straps flapping around everywhere in the wind. Um, this actually tidies up quite nicely. The Ver Virtus Bergen, it doesn't. I I there's just straps all over. I don't know what some of the straps do and I genuinely have cut pretty much 90% of the straps off bar the ones that um, attach the top lid. Um, but yeah, that's the outside. You get zips on there. So if you really, really, really wanted to, you could zip some side pouches on there. Um, Probably wouldn't uh, do the uh, issued ones. Have I got? So I just oh, this is there. So I've got a, um, a that's one off the a Bergen, another a Warrior Assault Systems Bergen, which is a Gleeman Bergen, and um, which I use. Unfortunately, I can't use it here, but that's the one I will well use when I go back to unit again. But it's a smaller sort of side pouch, so not the big one that you would have on your Bergen. Um, that if you're maybe potentially going for like three four days. You know, you could throw that on there, and then all of a sudden now, you haven't got something the size of a Bergen, but you can maybe get a bit more food in there, uh, ammo, uh, all the rest of it, specifically you use ones who are maybe potentially going between sergeants and that, where you have to carry a little bit more. But then you can upscale and descale it, which is actually quite a good idea. And if you take that off, then obviously you've got your nice sort of uh, pouches there, and they're actually quite tight, the way they've sewed them in. So it will stop you from putting loads and loads and loads of crap in there. But genuinely, if you've got an AT4 launcher in there, uh, Asm, uh, shovel, pick, they're going to be pretty preferent than everyone having to carry them nowadays. You can get that slid in there and you're, you're good to go. At the front now, I've just noticed as I was doing this, I've actually just seen this, is there's another zip here along the front. Uh, and you've got another pouch in here. Um, so it is deep. It goes all the way down to the bottom of the day sack. But, and it's also quite tight is where it's been sewed, so you're not getting a lot in there. What could you put in there? Probably put your, um, if you're a commander, maybe TAMs. This is if you're deploying not with your Bergen, you're not taking your TAMs into battle. But if you're going for a long period of time, just maybe your sort of crib card for whatever operation you're on. Um, spare documents as such. There's not a lot of other kit and equipment. You might get like a pair of hat or gloves in there. It is quite, it is quite tight. Into the actual day sack itself. You have not got an under zip like you would in the Bergen, so there's nothing that in that uh, that lid. The only access to that lid is the top of it, and this is 35 litre all in. 
So what I've noticed in here then is, where's my map? Is you've got another, uh, like an elastic pouch here. Could you fit a 354 in there? 354 is a radio. You're definitely not getting this. You're gonna struggle to put a 355 in there. You'll potentially get away with a 354. I don't know, you might squeeze a 355. There might be a hard with a battery and everything. That's a big radio. Um, but what I have noticed is um, the pouch doesn't go all the way down to the bottom of the day sack. It goes a little bit down. So that actually might help where the weight it, off it would sit on the sort of top of your shoulders when you've got your radio in there so it's not sort of slagging down on you whenever you're sort of uh, patrolling or doing whatever you need to do. Uh, you've got another strap in, in there would be probably to hold the radio in place once the radio is in there. I'll leave that there, I'm not cutting that out because I'll test it when I get hands on a radio. But that's basically all it is, it's just, it's just a deep shell. So you need to waterproof all your kit, individually put it all in there uh, and then you're good to go. There's not much else in there, there's a few clips in here. No idea what that clip would do. No idea. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much what it is. And that obviously is like that style of day sack where if you've just seen there, I'm having to pull everything out to get. So if you've got, um, I don't know, sort of your night, <laughs> some smaller bit of serialized kit and it's made its way down into the bottom whenever you're running around uh, and you're trying to get it, you can see there where you're having to pull everything out uh, to get at. Whereas, um, that style of day sack where it just slips all the way open um, and to get an access off it, I prefer that. If this was integrated in there, you would near enough have a perfect day sack. Um, I think anyway, for, for being non issued, for not spending any money, coming straight out of the Quartermasters, really decent day sack there. Um, the, uh, the straps on it then, it's another thing I really want to talk about here is because it is a part of the Virtus family, Project Virtus or whatever it is, um, the straps go very nicely with the Virtus body armor. Uh, you can see there how they're angled. Um, they just sit nicely on the shoulders. Um, I don't think I've got I've got no pictures or videos of it because this was in the last exercise and I'm not going out now for another week or so um, before this video goes out. But I will share it on the stories or something um, so you get to see it. But the way they're angled and designed, they sit nicely across your body armor, so they're not they're not nipping your arm or nothing like that. And it sits perfectly when you're wearing body armor, so it's, it's not hideous at all the way it looks. Uh, and then obviously you've got all the different sort of straps and sort of stuff here to sort of adjust it. And that, what I do straight away is I tighten it straight away so the strap goes all the way up to the top and then I just get some sniper tape on there and sniper tape it. Uh, they have got little um, loops where you can sort of wind them round, but I think it doesn't really matter. I think after you're sort of running around for a period of time, they become loose and then you've got flipping straps going everywhere. So they're the ones I know that I'm not gonna have to consistently keep adjusting. So I just put a little bit of sniper tape on there. The only time you're probably gonna have to adjust that is if you're carrying sort of like huge amounts of weight or different bits of equipment where you need to attach it onto there. That's probably not gonna happen where I am. So I can just keep that nice and neat and tape that up. And you've got little uh, Velcro straps there, which is probably going to be for your straw, for your camelback. But, so there we go. That is the, uh, that, I'm sorry. And so down the bottom here, you'll see two little buckles that are here. I don't know where it is because they've taken it off. It's two little buckles are here and here. Um, it was a hip strap, so you can do the hip strap thing. But now I never, that might work if you're doing like tabbing and stuff, or if you're doing some sort of big, long sort of uh, navigation exercise. But uh, I just took that strip. I didn't have to cut it off, so I haven't modified it anyway. So if I ever have to hand it back in, which would never happen, um, or if I want to use it, I can just quickly I'd put this back on again and it'll do what this job it's designed to do. But I just popped it off because I do not require that. And so I just find another zip there, bottom zip there, where you can take out the um, back panel. Now, someone did say to me, take it out and you can fit more in it. So that just slides all the way at the back. But then, I'll have to go away and test it, but what happens then, it becomes a bit more like a, I think, like a sack of spuds there when you're putting all your kit and equipment. I like to have some sort of panel on there to, to keep a, a sort of, uh, the, de the day sack a bit more rigid um, when I'm putting the kit and equipment in there. But if you wanted to, and it floats your boat, you can take that out uh, and keep it to one side. But yeah, totally different style of video there. Um, and I do genuinely think now, I'd love to hear your sort of thoughts on it, but I do think now we've come, finally getting to a, a stage where the British Army's kit and equipment is, is starting to look pretty good and it's good and fit for the job like, and it's just working as that good system. Clearly, we're not 100% there with everything because there's a lot of bits of other kit and equipment out there which are a little bit sort of questionable. One would be the trousers, but I'll be a totally different video in itself. 
Uh, thanks very much for joining me and if you've got any questions just drop it in the comment section below and I'd like to hear also if you're a veteran and you've watched this video all the way through what you now think of the British Army's kit and equipment. Do you see a big improvement from whenever you were first serving or do you think we're just still just sort of uh, throwing plans against the wall and nothing really good is happening? Uh, I'm Luke, thanks very much for joining me and if you're first time here please consider subscribing if you like more military style comment, comment, content and I will see you again on the next video. See you in a bit.